a foot away from me is this massive screen that is somehow yeah. directing the light, the sunlight, the natural light. Then there's a massive camera four inches from your head. Right here. Right there, right in your grill. And then there's a producer and a director who are within inches of you. And then there's lighting. So, and there's the the microphone boom just hanging right above you. Where right. Well, you think it's like, this is right above my head, but it's just out of frame. Exactly. So you know? all this stuff that is actually out of frame or out of view of the camera is within, you know, touching distance of you. And you're surrounded by people who are out of frame. Right. Uh, and so, and then you're told, well, act natural. Yeah. Act like nobody's there. And and it's, it's very difficult. It's different. It's different. Yeah. It's no, different. And it's difficult for Don't. sure. All right, take two. We just recorded 20 minutes and the internet shut off. So we're back and we're going to do a, an even better first 20 minutes because we were getting a little uh, <laughs> we're getting a little off topic. So philosophical. We're getting a little philosophical, a little, a little deep, maybe a little too deep about mortality. But in doing that, we brought up a really exciting topic in that here are you coming out of the locker room for halftime of you know, the second half of life here. And you did something you've never done this weekend. Yeah. Life is full of surprises. Right. <laughs> and that's the, that's the joy of it is that I did get to do something really unique for, for my uh, life experience, which is to, uh, is to help uh, NSC neighborhood sports club with uh, a film production. Yes. And I'm glad you said a film production, you know, originally we were throwing around the, the commercial word saying that it was a commercial, but we can all agree that this production is, is way too high a quality in content, in storytelling, in the acting for it to be not considered a short film, really. So you, yeah. made, you made your your film debut. Yeah, no, it was very exciting. But uh, but before we talk about the actual nuts and bolts of the production, right? Um, maybe you want to talk a little bit about really kind of the, the big picture of what it is. The big picture, yes. We did already have some of this conversation, so... Some of the context may have slipped my mind. Yes, for Neighborhood Sports Club, uh, we had the idea for a play on words that we wanted to turn into an entire collection. So we created this capsule collection, and we knew we wanted to do a really cool story to coincide with it. That's when the idea for the commercial started. But really, it turned into a short film once we started writing it, and it became a story. And you know, we were looking for people to fill the roles as the very important actors in it. And who better to do it than the people closest to us? So my dad was a star actor. Dylan's dad, Frederic, was a star actor. My godfather, Julian, was a star actor. You know, a kid who's been coming to all of our pop-ups was our star, young phenom. Yeah. And really, it kind of brought together the neighborhood, no pun intended, sure. to make this happen. I think that's a lot of what we're doing with Neighborhood Sports Club is building community, you know, creating a space for people to come together and, and do cool things. And this film was a piece of history. Yeah. Now, when you say capsule collection, what does that mean? So that is a collection that's not, it's not a full range. So it's not like we have an entire fall winter collection. It's, it's a bit smaller in size and kind of, it, it's directed towards one theme. Okay. And so the theme is, this play on words that I'm not going to say right now because that may give a little bit away. But essentially, we have this theme and we have a whole collection to go with it. And that is sweats, which I'm wearing right now, which I'm not going to show you the logo. Yeah, good job, Dad, hiding it. And a crew neck. We have a t-shirt. We have a coffee mug. We have a hat. And who knows, there may be some more surprises um, as we get closer to the release. We're looking to do a premiere for the short film, followed by including with that a release of some of the apparel, and then maybe the next morning do a watch party with additional releases of the apparel and accessories. Cool. So that sounds great. We, we got some fun things coming down the pipeline, but let's let's get back to this production a little bit, absolutely, um, and talk about your acting experience. What was it like working with 
the neighborhood sports club crew as um, directors, producers, and giving you direction. I'll talk a little bit about my experience, but I want to hear about your experience as the actor, first of all. Right. Well, I, I think what what you guys had us do, us being the actors, do in advance of the actual filming, which was just a couple of days ago, was uh, last weekend we had, uh, I call it a read-through, you call it a, a table read? Yeah, a table read. A table read Same where thing. we had the script, the actors had the script, and we met at a remote location to sit down. <laughs> with. We met, we met at Dylan's dad and stepmom's house in Cloverdale. Yeah. Be- beautiful excuse to get out to yeah. wine country. Yeah, in the Alexander Valley. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, Undisclosed location. Yeah, that works too. That's right. <laughs> and we had a table read where the uh, actors in front of you guys, the director, producers, uh, filmers, read through the script. And I don't know how many times we read through the script. I'm I'm estimating 30, it was up there. 40, 50 times. Yeah, probably. And, and it's a relatively short script, but we went over it and over it and over it. And that was, I think, enormously helpful for I think all of us speaking for the, all the actors, because uh, over the course of the various table reads, our table reads changed dramatically. Yeah, uh, it changed dramatically in terms of the timing of our lines, how how we interacted with one another, how we looked at each other, and we actually changed a bit of the script as we went along. So. I think the first 10 or 15 table reads were very different than the final 10 or 15, which were sort of the final product of what we did when we actually filmed. And you guys were giving us, I thought, really good direction. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about the creative process is that nothing is set, you know, like part of the fun is the creative freedom to tweak things and to improv and to ad lib to make the, the best finished product. And so I mean, even if you look at it when we started writing it. So like I started writing it and did about half a page, met up with Dylan and Jordan. We read through that and we're like, ah, the the story completely changed. And so then the story changed and we created a new script. We brought that script to you guys, did the table read. From the start of that table read to the end, lines had been added, lines had been taken out, you know, different looks had been made, different tones were changed. And then even if you look at the way we actually filmed the whole, the ending was different. You, you remember how we, it was a different ending with the dialogue and Correct. everybody's saying, you know, the catchphrase. So I think that's part of the, part of the fun is actually trying it and seeing, because looking at words on a paper and reading them are so different than acting them out and having real responses, you know, that, that was, the, that was sort of what I took away most from the table read was that what we think as actors are projecting that we're projecting is very different than what people are seeing as we talk. So when you said, you know, change your orientation here or change your pacing or look this way, when you say that, don't look that way. Yeah. uh, Those are really important direct directives. And I think it kind of changes the whole, whole vibe of the, of the film. Yeah. What about, what about just the idea of having that big camera in your face? Cause it, it was, it's not, you know, we're not holding an iPhone. We're not holding the camera that we're recording this on. You know, it was a it was a real cinema quality camera. And it's different than the table read. The table read we did as if it was real life. So you say your line, the next person says their line, next person says their line, and you act through the whole scene. Yeah, when you're actually doing the filming, which we did uh, at a cafe in San Francisco, we're sitting at a small table and... A foot away from me is this massive screen that is somehow yeah. directing the light, the sunlight, the natural light. Then there's a massive camera four inches from your head. Right here. Right there, right in your grill. And then there's a producer and a director who are within inches of you. And then there's lighting. So, and there's the the microphone boom just hanging the, right above you. Where right. Where you think it's like, this is right above my head, but it's just out of frame. Exactly. So you know? all this stuff that is actually out of frame or out of view of the camera is within, you know, touching distance of you. And you're surrounded by people who are out of frame. Right. Uh, and so, and then you're told, well, act naturally. Yeah. Act like nobody's there. And and it's, it's very difficult. It's different. It's different. Yeah. It's no, different. And it's difficult for sure. And so that's why... I'm so excited by how how great everyone did. You specifically, you did an amazing job. And what about it was fun to kind of see 
first couple takes when the camera was out and like you said the the lighting was out and the audio equipment was out you know it felt a little bit uh, a little bit guarded you know maybe kind of just warming up to it how did it feel you know as the day went on as you did some more takes did, you, did it feel like you got to loosen up a little bit and you know maybe by the end where you're like hey this is you know this is fun I, you know, i'm a natural in front of camera whereas in the beginning it was a little like you know the lines didn't have the same emotion or you know maybe talk a little bit about yeah, no, that you captured it first of all it was all fun for, for yeah. us because it was us so, too us too it was so unique and different and we're working with people we know and and are familiar I, with i forgot to add there is more to the family cast i remember yes. that yasko played a waiter in this in this short film also bruno makes an appearance when when gus is dribbling by the lake also nisa hatifi pulls up on a run he's literally on a run around the lake and literally passes by as we're shooting the commercial yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. uh so like it couldn't have been more of a family affair which i think just aligns that much more with what we're doing with neighborhood sports club and really bringing together you know our community this community and you know creating kind of that place for us all to you know be a community right and and isn't isn't mom and mom's an ex mom's in it no. nancy's in it dylan makes an, makes a cameo jordan's in it that's right yeah so like we're all in it at some point which is you know really cool and special to look back on and see you know this short film where you know i'm i'm biased because we wrote it directed it and are in it but just looking at the first like looking at the monitor and seeing how some of those shots look i mean I, i'm really excited to have this not only just for this release and you know to commemorate this really really cool collection but also like to look back on a year from now to look back on five years from now 10 years from now and be like we got to make this really cool high level production with all of our family and friends you right. know right so to answer your question a it was really fun throughout yeah b 100% as you go along and you're doing take after take after take, which was not tedious or, or, or boring, it was fun to kind of just tweak small things uh, and to watch the process evolve. I got a lot more comfortable in front of this cast of, of, of you know, professionals, film professionals yeah. as the day went by. But what, what was really unique is that we started filming very early in the morning, right? Yeah, our our, uh, our call time was 7 o'clock. Right. So show up at 7 a.m. So we're in a San Francisco neighborhood at a cafe, which is closed because of the early hour. But that was on purpose uh, that it was closed. So we started filming very early on. And as the morning went on, because we were there for hours, uh, the neighborhood starts to light up. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, families are out taking strolls with their babies and people are now going to get their coffee and the street traffic picks up yeah. and people are watching us as they walk across the street or in the neighborhood there there we could tell the actors could tell ah what's going on here ah they're filming a commercial or something yeah. sort. they're doing some film yeah and that kind of added to the excitement of it frankly that uh people are looking at who are these guys what are they filming? <laughs> what are they <laughs> doing think, is that is that george clooney Right, is that? right. And if you've ever been around any kind of film set, not that I've been around it, but you always, you know, when I, the few I've been around, you're you're amazed at how many people it takes and how yeah. much equipment it takes yep. to do a one minute commercial or a one minute film. Yeah. And it, it could be, you know, 15, 20 people. We had a smaller crew than that, but still we had a big crew and a lot of equipment for one small scene. Yeah, it it's it's interesting because, you know, in a in a time like now when technology is exploding it's been exploding for the last 20 30 years and an iphone camera looks unbelievable some of the quality but then you know you look at what we used and the equipment and manpower required to do something so simple yeah you see the difference you see why you know there's commercials that look like they do you see why movies look like they do and you see why you know, something on Instagram or TikTok might look like it does. There's there's levels to this shit, you know? Yep. And part of the fun was showing our range as a company as to the level of production that we can produce. I think part of the fun with building Neighborhood Sports Club is proving to ourselves what we're capable of. And, you know, 
on a personal note, I'm someone who's always loved the creative side of things, whether it's photography, videography, directing, all that kind of stuff. I've always loved it, but I've never really been able to apply it because, you know, some of the things I've talked about in the book that I'm publishing and just throughout the podcast is this idea that when you're a serious athlete, there's this misconception that you have to be only that. And you have to kind of, at least me, when I was younger in high school and kind of during that time when I had these these interests, I felt that I kind of had to push away, not push away, but not necessarily lean into my creative passions and more so be hyper focused with the athletics. And I mean, it it worked. It worked. I played professionally for six years and I still consider myself an extremely high level athlete when I'm not hurt. <laughs> but also it's just it's just been really fun to kind of lean into now some of these interests. So, you know, writing in the commercial. I like I like writing. I like storytelling. And so the creative process of writing the the short film was really fun. And then, like you said, the table read, getting to, you know, listen to how that sounds, make some adjustments, you know, whether it be the actual lines or the tone or the direction, your, you know, body orientation, all that kind of stuff. And then actually being on set, you know, I think it's easy for people when you're trying new things or when you haven't necessarily had a formal education in something to have somewhat of imposter syndrome, you know, like yep. you're thinking, oh, I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm not a director. I'm not a producer. I'm not a writer, but it's like, well, you are, you're, you're doing it. And part of the only way to prove to yourself that you can do these things is to try it and to do it. And that's the same thing with this podcast. Neither of us were hosts before this. Neither of us were podcasters, but we said, screw it, let's do it. And so now we're, we're doing that. And so I think part of the really fun part of this commercial, not only is the content itself going to be incredible, but and again, looking back on this a year from now, looking back on this five years from now is going to be incredible, but also just the idea of trying something new and proving, hey, you can do new things. And I want to touch on that point because I I have great respect for you and Dylan and Jordan in on, on that concept you just brought up, trying new things. Now, if you're going to introduce a new line of sweatpants or sweatshirt or whatnot, you could ha hold up an iPhone, film it for 15 seconds, and then post it on Instagram or TikTok yeah. and say, here's our new line. Yeah. But you didn't want to do it. You wanted to do it kind of the right way and try something you'd never done, like make a film. That's yeah. a big deal making a film. Yeah. it's a, You had to hire a cameraman and a, a producer, director, or you know, lighting and sound you had to find the location those are all in hard in and of itself never mind the entire production you had to arrange the table read you had to write the script you had to you know secure the location uh and you went through a couple of locations didn't you yeah no we we went to try to find the right location yeah i mean this was a process scouting locations picking wardrobe we had you try on how many dang outfits you know there was a, there's a whole kind of machine behind what you might see in a 30 second clip, you know, or a one minute short film. And, you know, that whole process was a learning experience, but also just a confidence builder in showing that we can do these types of things. And if anything, it just gives us more, more wind in the sails to go out and say, Hey, let's, let's level it up again. You know, absolutely. So maybe, I'm, maybe we'll do a five minute short film. Maybe we'll do 30 minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. We've but, come a long way from our, uh, our marathon minute, uh, hot tub. Video. Hot tub hey, that hot tub video. I, I don't, I still, to this day, don't think that got the love that it deserves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that was incredible. We, we risked our lives for that. Yeah. We we're in the hot tub with right. microphones. Right. And well, we may have to re-release it. It could be a rewatch. It may be a re-release or rewatchable. Yep. Our other camera died, so if you're watching on YouTube, the quality may have changed. So maybe that helps our, you know, appearance here. We'll take it. Oh my, for sure. <laughs> Let's be real. No. So you're you're talking about trying new things. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, doing doing what you guys did, the film production, making a commercial, short film, whatever we're going to call it, is a big deal. And you know, there was another way you could have gone about it, right? You could yeah hold up a camera or cell phone and 
have you or Dylan or Jordan, you know, introduce the new line. It'd be great. It'd be fine. But you said, no, we're not going to do it that way. We want to create something. We want to try to do a, a film, a professional film, which like yeah. we've been talking about is a big deal. It takes a lot of time, takes money, takes effort. It takes the willingness to try something new that you may not be experienced well you're definitely not experienced with and you may not be good at yeah and um i give you credit for that yeah i think a lot of what we're doing with neighborhood sports club is just pushing the limits of what we're capable of individually and collectively you know i think just the concept of the business that we're looking to open up is we've talked about it's a big swing it's a huge idea it is going to take a lot of work it has taken a lot of work And same with some of these other creative endeavors that we're doing through NSC. You know, I think we're just day after day proving to ourselves what we're capable of doing. And I think that's a theme for anyone listening is like, you know, a lot of us put caps or limits on what we can do based on, I don't know, what you were told growing up or your education or, or, or what you're now 65 years old and you just had your 66, 66 years old. Apologies. I was trying to help you out. <laughs> Rounding down. Yeah, yeah, seriously. And then why not 60? Okay, you're now 60 years old and you just made your acting debut. So it's never too late to start. And I think, I don't know what it is about the way we're brought up, whether it's the educational system or just society kind of tries to make us into one thing and that one thing for the rest of our lives. Right. When as human beings, this world is so damn big and complex and there are so many cool things that you can be doing. And I think that's something for me personally, that's, you know, kind of on brand with where I am in life right now is like, you know, I'm in a transition period where I'm still figuring out what I want to do for the rest of my life. And, you know, I think there's this societal pressure to find the thing right now and be really great at that and do that for the rest of my life. But part of what I feel very strongly about, and I actually talked to Raheem about this, shout out Raheem, Marathon Minute fam. We had a call yesterday and I was talking about how both of us are very hyphenate. You know, his company is hyphenate creative co. I like to use the word hyphenate in that we're not one thing, right? You know, I'm not a director. I'm not a writer. I'm not a photographer. I am not a videographer. I like to do all of these things. And so it would be a disservice to myself. And this is this is me speaking candidly, who knows? If I was like, I really love photography, let me only focus on photography. Let me only take photos. Then I would be cutting out my ability to write. I'd be cutting out my ability to direct. I'd be cutting out my ability to be an athlete. You know, I don't want to limit what I can do. I like looking at the world with endless possibilities. And so I think this short film is an extension of that, of not limiting what we're able to do and and kind of doing the opposite of pushing it and saying, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to try. And if I succeed, great. And if I fail, I didn't fail. I just learned right. how maybe not to do it. And now I'm going to use that knowledge to do it better the next time. And, and the reason why I give you guys a lot of credit is because you're doing something I never did. Trust me. I mean, I was a lawyer and then I've been a mediator for you know the second part of my professional career, but I was never a hyphenated individual. And I, I would you say guys, you were, you, you've been an athlete your whole life. You've had other interests. I know but and other interests, but I have really, you know, had kind of one, a one dimensional type of career, maybe, maybe a little bit uh, of two dimensional going from a lawyer to be. Well, yeah. Mediator. I think you also undersell the risk you took to really go head first into mediating because that was not something at the time that was, you know, an easy decision, nor what looked like a smart and long-term beneficially beneficial, beneficial decision. But you know, you had the self belief. True. You had the trust and the vision, and look at you now. You're you've done pretty well for yourself in that career that you've chosen. No, no, true. I but but, I, and I appreciate that. But I've stayed kind of in my lane, so yeah. to speak, and maybe deviated a slightly, and then got back into it. But I, I admire folks who uh, 
either have multiple lanes or are willing to you know travel way left or right out of their lane, which is what you are doing. And I, I give you a lot of credit for that. I truly do. Thanks. And, and look, I'm thinking about it. you've, you know, in addition to being an athlete with with the neighborhood sports club, you've put on a four day event, right? You put on a speaking uh, a panel of speakers on a, a soccer related topic. You've created lines of apparel and other merchandise. You've now done a short film leaving out some stuff publishing a book right now you're publishing a book right now you're honing your photographic skills you're doing a lot of we're doing a podcast right now you're doing a podcast right produce a lot of content for social media that's a lot of stuff and that's all happened in the last couple of years you've also had a studio up in portland yeah well Um, i think that's what's exciting about is that this has been two three years of really giving this creative side of me the ability to, to to act on that side of me you know and lean into it whereas before i was hesitant to and that's not to say that i'm not like <laughs> i don't have the same passion for being an athlete but the reality is the last couple of years playing professionally were extremely difficult and playing football did not bring me the same joy that it, it had in past years and so it helped to have outlets. That's it helped true. to have creative outlets. And especially this past year when I was injured, it's like, you know, and especially these past few months, like I literally, I can't run. I can't kick a ball. My whole life, my outlet has been football. In high school, when I'm having a bad day or just in general, even in college, like I'm going to to Witter by myself, kicking a ball against the wall, playing music. That is my happy place. I did not have my happy place for especially these last few months and in a large part these last couple of years. And so this creative kind of passion that I've been leaning into, passions I've been leaning into, that has turned a bit more into my happy place. And Neighborhood Sports Club has given me a renewed relationship with football because my relationship with football the last couple of years has not been positive. And so Neighborhood Sports Club has, you know, ignited a lot of these things where we can act creatively, but also, you know, a healthy relationship with football and kind of reminding me why I love football in the first place, why I started playing at six, why I couldn't get enough of it in middle school, high school, why all of my friends came from football is because a lot of what neighborhood sports club is showing. So, yeah, I think. Well said. No, that's that. I think you're a hundred percent right. And thank goodness that you've had outlets. Yeah. And also just kind of on the topic, well, this is a bit of a transition, but I am on the road to recovery. I do have finally a few doctor's appointments uh, coming my way. Unfortunately, it has taken a lot of work uh, outside of the system to do that. I've had to advocate largely for myself. and But long story short, we are finally moving in the right direction in my health. And I really cannot wait to get some much needed clarity and hopefully you know, some more steps in the right direction to being able to be active because that is such a big part of my life. But let's also transition into another great thing that happened this weekend. Not only did we shoot our first NSC production, not only did you make your actorial debut, but two of my best friends and my business partners, Dylan and Jordan, got engaged. And that is very close to both of our hearts as Dylan and I have been best friends since nine. Dylan and Jordan have lived in the cabana. We're essentially attached to the hip. They're just as much your kids as they are. Uh, Absolutely. My best friends. Absolutely. And so that was a really cool thing because we, we'd been kind of, you know, thinking an engagement is is uh, is due soon. And it, it, it all came together this weekend. Dylan uh, did a great job planning everything. Uh, he took Jordan on a hike and he solicited my help in capturing the moment. Uh, me and Aziza did the hike. So the plan was we would, they were going to do the hike and then we would start shortly after them. After the engagement happened, we would show up a couple more of their friends and, you know, we'd all get to celebrate, you know, the brief moments after. But, you know, as we just talked about, I do love photography. I do love capturing the moment. Yep. You know, in talking to my best friend Dylan, I'm like, yo, this is this is for life. This is an engagement. You want to 
have this moment to to see. And so, you know, I pushed a little bit of capturing the moment and seeing if that was possible. And Dylan agreed. And so me and Aziza hiked out for them, uh-huh. made sure we had adequate time so we didn't get spotted. We started the hike about an hour before them, got to the spot where we knew their, the proposal was going to be. It was going to be at this bench and scouted out the location. We wanted to do a hidden cam because we wanted to get a video of it because you know, just good to have that video. Yep. And then I wanted to take some film photos as well. And so we set up a hidden camera in the bushes, got to like put the branches and leaves. So it kind of framed the bench really nicely. It was difficult to get that to stay and not look really obvious because uh-huh. originally we had a bright pink phone case in there and it was, it was very obvious, but we, we did some camouflage action and then I found a nice bush to hide behind. But the thing with the, with the film camera is it's a 35 millimeter. So there's no zoom. Right. And it also makes a little bit of a noise when you take a photo. And so I knew I had to be kind of close and I knew I had to wait until essentially it was going to be okay to make a noise. And so uh, it took a while to find a spot, but I found a spot probably like 12 yards away and I laid on the ground only later to realize that there was a lot of poison oak around me. <laughs> but no, fortunately, I, I was wearing a lot of clothes. I think okay. I avoided it. So far, we are in the clear. But it, it was crazy. It felt like we were, I don't know, and it is such a high stakes situation because yeah. when they show up, it's like, you cannot mess this up. I do not want to be the one to mess up this engagement. And so when they we, Aziza spotted them walking from a few hundred yards away. We took our places and then, you know, they walked to the bench and I was, you know, holding my breath, trying to be as quiet as possible. And then once I kind of saw the proposal or the, you know, the conversation getting towards the proposal, Dylan gets on one knee. That's when I peek my head out of the bushes, snap the shot. Cause I was thinking, I got to give them enough time to get through a lot of the words before I sh- take the picture because when I take the picture, my my cover's blown. Right, that's true. And so I had to right. let him get the bulk of the words out, but then I didn't want to miss. I didn't want to wait too long, and then he stands up. That's right. So I waited, you know, probably 10, 15 seconds, and then I was like, "All right, it looks like he's getting up soon, or gonna put the ring on the finger." Snap the shot, and I was right. It was a bit loud. And Jordan turns around and it was good. She was surprised. I think she had an idea that the proposal was happening, but she didn't know that we were out there hiding. So the surprise worked. I got the shot. Uh, it's on Jordan's Instagram. I'm going to put it up soon. Okay. So the shot came out great. And you got then the shot. I got the shot. And then because you can't do it. It's not unlike what we were doing this weekend with the filming, right? You can't no say, redo. okay, let's cut. Let's, yeah. No redo. No redos. Got the shot. And then. The friends came and, and surprised them, took a bunch more kind of engagement photos. And did, did she say yes? Was that a spoiler? She, she spoiler said alert? yes. It's not a spoiler alert. Okay. She said yes. Uh, wedding. Congratulations, guys. Wedding will be soon, maybe summer 2024. Uh, we'll see. But that was just really fun. I mean, that's I mean, my best friend just got engaged. Yeah. And two of my best friends just got engaged. And so that's, it's I mean. a big deal a big deal and really cool to be a part of that. You know, I, I feel very lucky to have been there for that. Uh, I've been there, been there for a few of their first big moments. I I don't need to say any more about that as roommates. But yes, on in Domicelli, uh, (laughs) yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, what a weekend. I mean, that was Saturday and Dylan was, Dylan called me. He was like, he's like, Hey, this is a big weekend for us. We have the, we have the NSC short film, like, is it okay if we do this on Saturday? I don't want to, you know, take yeah. too much away from Sunday. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is just going to make it that much more of a memorable weekend. And it was, you know, it's you know, and, one and of the time, best weekends I've had in a long time. Oh, I bet. Timing is everything, right? Because weekend ago, it was storming out. You could not have a oh, hike yeah. or an engagement outdoors. You couldn't have done the filming. Right. So there, it was a beautiful, beautiful weekend weather-wise here in NorCal. And, God's uh, plan, I was going to say. Yeah. No, I've known Dylan since he was nine. He is like a second son to us. Uh, that's the way I look at him. And um, I I remember when Dylan and Jordan first met. Yeah. And um, I remember the first time I met Jordan. I think you guys were sophomores at Santa Clara. Maybe she was a freshman. Yeah, that was when that was when they met. And the first time I met her was uh, she had come to a you guys you and Dylan were playing on a 
roller hockey team, <laughs> yeah. which I don't think you were supposed to do yeah, uh, under your not. agreement with Santa Clara soccer. But you guys were playing roller hockey, and she had come to I come to watch you play, and she had I think just met Dylan. Frankly, it, yeah, it was probably early on, very early on in the relationship. She came to watch uh, Dylan play. And I'm really surprised <laughs> yeah, that she continued to date it. him because it was like watching uh, uh, Bambi on on ice skates. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, I can't say shit myself. I no, was, I was you, slide tacking. You were bad, and Dylan hours. was worse. Both, Those roller uh, hockey players. We were both not meant to be on ice. Yeah. No. After seeing him play roller hockey, I'm really surprised she stuck with it. Hey, but that's a testament. She was not she, for him for his roller hockey ability. She must she really was, love him. She was with them for who he was yeah. as a person. And that's a beautiful love story. Yeah. Congratulations. That's yeah. Very happy. Major, major congrats to Dylan and Jordan. I will say in our first episode in a long time, in the previous episode, you know, brought up a couple of topics about kind of how di difficult this year was with kind of the injury and some other politics of soccer. And then now I'm in this transition period. And I do want to talk about this in depth I don't want to just gloss over this, but I do want to save it a little bit for the right time. And so I don't know if right now is the right time to get into that. I'll wait a little bit. I, I think that's a separate conversation because it's a it's a really intense conversation of what your last couple of years have been like. Um, yeah. And what what you've had to deal with. And it's an important conversation. All right. <laughs> Our internet just shut off for the third time mm -hmm. this pod. So who even knows what is recorded and what is not at this point? But I think we have enough to put together a good episode. But I think that may be a sign that it's time to sign off and we have more coming. The good thing about this is, hey, here we are a couple weeks in a row back right. on the pod. And so we're, we're back with regularity. And so more of this story will be coming. I do want to share more about this last couple of years, more about, you know, what's been going on with this transition and kind of what's next and what has led to all of this, but that will come in due time. And in the meantime, we got, but how, but how, how nice to have this weekend, right. And two yeah. really positive things. Not that life is always positive, but it's always nice to be able to talk about a, uh, a good friend getting engaged yeah, uh, and doing a film production. For sure. But there's lots of other stuff to talk about. Yeah. No, we have, we, we have a lot to talk about. But yeah, it is nice in a year that has been more challenging than others for a lot of reasons to have these highlights to talk about and to have some things to look forward to with now hopefully getting some clarity, making some some consultation with with my um, with my injury. But also, you know, we got the premiere coming. We have the release of this collection coming and we have a lot more coming with Neighborhood Sports Club. We also have weekly pickup. That was one thing we didn't speak about. But we had we had 10 people in the pouring rain. The next weekend, it was shine. Uh, the sun was shining. We had probably 20, 25 people. And that's in two weeks of doing it. So really excited to see this continue to grow. Every aspect of NSC continue to grow. And just us as podcast hosts, us as father, son. Yep. All of this just continue to grow. And like we talked about, we're... We're pushing ourselves and, you know, we're l taking life by the horns and, right. and making the most of it. And we're re-ramping uh, Marathon Minute, which I personally love. I, I personally love it as well. I personally love it as well. And so let's uh, let's keep the ball rolling. Okay. See you, uh, see you next time. On? Marathon Minute, baby. Marathon Minute, baby. Let's do it. Let's go. And if you haven't gotten some, some merch, if you're looking at YouTube, this is the reverse colorway of the logos t we are restocked we have the reverse colorway but also we have yeah. marathon Minute on the back you can see Sorry. that yeah but uh yeah we got marathon minute gear if you want to rep head to marathonminute.store and we got more on the way we do have some really exciting guests coming as well uh, i did want to just get the ball rolling with some consistency before getting to the guests but we have some really cool people on the way, we have a couple already recorded and we got a couple on the way. So stay tuned. We're back. Let's get this done before the internet cuts out. Yes, exactly. Marathon Minute, baby. Yeah.